Hello, and welcome to Whatever This Is with me, James Tully. I program the cinemas here at Worthing Theatres and Museum in the Connaught and the studio. Uh, so for better or for worse, I'm the one that put on all the films that screen here. So uh, if you like something or don't like something, get on Facebook and tell us all about it. Or maybe if you see me in the foyer, you can say, hey, what a great job you're doing. You're probably the best film programmer in town. Uh, of course, if you think I do a bad job, maybe don't tell me about it. Just keep you doing, keep it quiet. Or go, uh, excuse me, I watched The Souvenir and it was boring, which it was. Or, oh, I came to see The Lighthouse because you told me it was really good and it was really confusing and then my brain hurt for two days afterwards. Which is also probably too, but it was really good. Uh, and it looked beautiful, so what can I say? Um, I'm going to be talking you through all the films coming up here at the Connor over the next month or so. Uh, so sit back and enjoy. Our first film for March actually comes out in February, comes out here on February the 28th, and is one of my favourite films of the year. I pretty much guarantee now, by the end of the year, I'm not going to see anything better than this. I absolutely loved it. And it is Portrait of a Lady on Fire. A French romance drama, just absolutely sumptuous and beautiful. I am still reeling, and I think it's a crime that the film wasn't nominated at any of the major award ceremonies. Uh, for Even for the best foreign film, I think, I know Parasite was going to win everything anyway, but France didn't even nominate this as their best film. They nominated um, Les Miserables, which admittedly I haven't seen, so I can't really comment, but if it's better than Portrait of a Lady on Fire, then I'll eat my hat. Also at the beginning of March, we have The Call of the Wild, uh, which I'm really excited for because basically it's got Harrison Ford in it. I'm an old Star Wars and Indiana Jones fan, so anything with Harrison Ford in it just instantly makes me smile. Uh, this is based on the, the book by Jack London about Buck, the sled dog, who goes on adventures on the Yukon Valley as he kind of breaks free and Harrison Ford kind of weaves in and out uh, of those adventures as he goes off into the wild, fights bears, but mainly hangs out with Harrison Ford. That looks like the best bits to me. Um, it's rated PG, so it's for all the family, people that might have enjoyed the book years and years and years ago, or for young kids who like dogs, or for people like me that like Harrison Ford. Right at the beginning of March, we have Military Wives, uh, which is a comedy, it's directed by Peter Catanio, who directed The Full Monty, and you can see the elements of that in that British feel-good story. Uh, this is based on the true phenomenon of the military wives' choirs, um, groups of women that started choirs while their husbands were away in war zones on their bases and became really popular. In fact, they had like UK number one singles over here. This is the story of, of one of those choirs rise to fame whilst also dealing with the pressures of having husbands away fighting. Sometimes when I think of her name, when it's only a game And I need you Then on to Misbehaviour, which is a comedy drama with Kira Knightley, Jesse Buckley and Greg Kinnear. It's a true story set around 1970 when the Miss World competition was held in London uh, and the newly formed Women's Liberation Front decided to attempt to protest and storm the ceremony and upend it basically. Um, but it's also a story about the camaraderie between the women in the competition and that dichotomy between wanting the competition to go ahead and not wanting it to go ahead and what actually does give more strength to the women involved. Um, it was hosted at the time in 1970 by American comedian Bob Hope, who's played here by Greg Kinnear. Um, it looks really interesting and, and asks a lot of questions, but also just really funny and charming. But we really believe beauty isn't just skin deep. The girls also get marks on charm, grace, deportment. Swimsuits. Towards the end of March, we have A Quiet Place Part 2. Um, sequel to A Quiet Place, which I'm sure many of you will have seen. Um, I loved seeing A Quiet Place, thought it was great. I saw it here in the studio. Um, and the movie for the first hour is pretty much silent. And I love looking around at people who had boxes of popcorn and they don't eat any of it or rustle around for fear of ruining the movie for other people. Um, horror movies are usually kind of crash, bang, wallop, blah, 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 blood and guts. So I liked that this one did the opposite of that and just kind of really dialed it down, but still managed to keep really scary and pulled you into a family drama. You really cared about the characters. Uh, which then makes you interested about where they're going to go for the sequel. Uh, obviously, the first one was a horror movie, so not all those characters made it to the end credits. So I don't know who is going to appear in the new one and who's not. We know Emily Blunt's in it because she's on the poster. Uh, she's also married to the director, John Krasinski, who most people know from The Office as Jim from The Office. Uh, he directed this one, he directed the first one, and he's the writer as well. So great job for him. I'm really, really happy for them as a couple. Uh, great movie, really looking forward to it. Right at the end of March, uh, in for the Easter holidays, so previewing and then in for the Easter holidays is Peter Rabbit 2, uh, the sequel to the inexplicably popular Peter Rabbit. 
Um, I really disliked Peter Rabbit. Um, I think because I really liked the books and I was like, that's not my Peter Rabbit. Like, um, he was just too, uh, James Corden, I think, played him too cocky with his like, ha ha, hey, look at me, I'm a cool leather jacket on. Denim jacket, sorry. Um, but it just, it didn't appeal to me, but I know from seeing it here, like, Hundreds of kids just absolutely loved it. Um, people loved it. I'm sure many of you loved it too. And the sequel, it looks like enough fun, I think. Basically, the rabbits all go off with Domino Gleeson to London and they cause inevitable havoc there whilst eating carrots. The cast is actually pretty good. Domino Gleeson, uh, Rose Byrne, James Corden, if you like that sort of thing. And Margot Robbie's in it as well. Right, we have some limited shows right at the beginning of the month of The Colour Out of Space which I saw and I just absolutely loved. Uh, it's got Nicolas Cage in it, directed by Richard Stanley, who's a legendary director. This is the first time, first time he's directed for the big screen in about 20 years. If you can, look up the documentary about him and the island of Dr. Moreau. He's absolutely bonkers. I've got no idea why anyone thought it'd be a good idea to give him money to make another movie, but I'm so glad they did. Uh, the story is brilliant. Nicolas Cage, on true, properly bonkers form, has moved to this rural country with his family, and a meteor crashes outside his house, and emanating from the meteor is a new kind of colour never seen before. And this colour kind of permeates the ground, the nature, the people, and eventually everyone starts to kind of be infected by this colour and slowly becomes a bit unhinged. And it's a great kind of proper visual effects, but practical effects like gory, masterpiece, like I say, based on HP Lovecraft. I just absolutely loved it. It's right in my wheelhouse. If you like films like Mandy with like Nicolas Cage gone bonkers, then this is right up your street. It's only on for like two shows, very limited performances. So please don't miss it on the big screen because later on you'll be gutted that you did. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, in amongst all that, we have our regular performances. So we have Saturday morning pictures every Saturday morning at 10, 15 a.m. Tickets are really cheap. They're there for all the family. You can come on down. Um, usually films from a couple of weeks earlier, but there'll be great stuff, always great stuff. 10, 15 a.m. every Saturday. And on Monday mornings, don't forget our silver screen strand. This is a uh, season of, of films aimed at an older audience but everyone is welcome. It's 11 a.m. on Monday mornings. Tickets are four pounds with free tea and coffee and biscuits. Um, and there's always like a recent great movie. So you can come on down, have a chat with me. I'm always there, have a chat with other people around. It's a really nice kind of club feeling uh, and everyone's really chatty and lovely. So please do come on down to those. In a bid to increase our accessibility, we've also started to add lots more subtitled shows. We used to just screen subtitled performances on Monday evenings. We've now started to add them on Thursday evenings and weekends and mid midweek daytime performances. So I really hope there's something there that you'll get to see. And if you know someone that might be able to make use of subtitled performances, please do let them know, because um, we want as many people to be able to take advantage of this service as possible. Also, one of our regular performances is we uh, screen in conjunction with the Worthing Film Club. Uh, really happy to, to partner up with them. They screen some great movies, stuff that I couldn't squeeze in or they find old classics that maybe just didn't, that passed under my radar. Uh, and at the end of March, they're screening Federico Fellini's La Dolce Vita, which I must admit is a gap in my knowledge. I've never actually seen it, so I'm looking forward to coming along. You may or may not know that uh, in the Connaught, we have just had a brand new state-of-the-art projector installed, 4K, the best that money can buy and also a brand new screen. So it's pretty much as good as you're ever gonna get it. So we are really the place to come and see the new releases at the moment. I saw 1917 in there in 4K on the brand new screen and it just blew me away. It looked absolutely incredible. Commemorating the 10th anniversary of the passing of Corey Haim, we actually have a screening of The Lost Boys, a uh, classic horror from 1987, which people really love. It really has passed, stand, stood the test of time. Kiefer Sutherland is in it, Jason Patrick. Uh, we're also screening that in 4K in the main house store. Tickets are selling fast for that one because it's a really popular film, so don't delay. So over the last six months, we've been working with a team called Spotlight On. They are a team of young film enthusiasts who we recruited locally with funding from the BFI. They have been screening films here at the Connaught, basically a group of young people who they basically get to get the screen and do whatever they want. So they've been screening films recently like Gremlins, Moonlight, and their new film coming up on the Mother's Day, 22nd of, 22nd of March, don't worry mum, I didn't forget, is The Shawshank Redemption, one of the all-time classics, uh, celebrating its 25th anniversary of the UK release. Uh, so they do wonderful things as well. They'll be doing little extra bits, maybe setting up the cinema to look like a prison or something. I don't know what they've got in store, but check it out and come on down. 
Uh, as some of you know, we don't just play movies here. We have lots of great screen art, so which is like live events broadcast from around the country, like theatre, musicals, dance, sometimes recorded live, sometimes broadcast live. Uh, but one of those that we have at the beginning of March is Riverdance, the 25th anniversary, which is recorded in Dublin, uh, which is uh, a great performance, which is at the beginning of March. On International Women's Day, we have a screening of Radioactive, which is a, a biopic of the Marie Curie starring Rosamund Pike and directed by Majin Satrapi, who directed Persepolis and she wrote the comic book of Persepolis, uh, which is one of my all-time faves. So I'm really looking forward to that. The film's also scrolled, followed by a live satellite Q&A with both the director and Rosamund Pike after the film. That's us wrapped up for March, but if you like the video, then click like, do all those things, subscribe to our videos over here somewhere apparently, um, and come back. I'll be doing one of these again for April, and my special guest will be Michael Bay.